All right, guys, today I've got an old Husqvarna push mower. This is a 2013, so it's seven, eight years old now. This is a mower that I picked up off a of marketplace for 20 bucks. Seller says it just won't start. I have had it running outside, sprayed some starting fluid in it, got it going. Uh, there's about eight to 10 inches of snow on the ground here right now, or I'd have taken the camera out and showed you that, but just took it out on the deck. Spot I cleared the snow off on just to make sure it would actually run. I would say worst case scenario here, it's probably had old gas left in it. I've already drained the gas out of it. I'll be pulling the oil out of it here in just a little bit. I'm gonna clean this one up and get it ready to go for spring. Well, it really doesn't look that bad in this one. You never know, though. I always like to change them. You never know what the heck's in them. Guys, these little pumps here for taking oil out too are really nice, especially if you get a mower that doesn't have a drain plug in the bottom of it. I always buy my oil in bulk and then just measure it out in an old measuring cup. One thing with these mowers, they do not have filters on them, which if they did would probably prolong their life, but I think most people neglect them long before the filter would ever be an issue. if I mentioned it in the beginning of this video or not, but I already drained the gas out of it. I'm not sure if the carburetor is bad on this thing or not, but we'll get it back together here and see. Let's see what kind of junk it's got in here. Hey, it's still got a pre-filter on it. A lot of times what I'll do on these filters, if they're not too bad, I mean, that filter, I cleaned that out just a little soap and water in the sink. Um, Pre-filter is not too bad. Just take some compressed air. If they got a lot of crap in them, it's better to replace them, but this one is really not that bad. A little dust in there. Don't see any reason that one can't just be used over. I still don't know if I'm gonna have to take this carburetor off or not, but we'll get it all back together here and put some fuel in it and see what we can do with it. I know it runs with starting fluid. Best I can tell, this one's bone dry. A little bit of stuff blew out from around it, but I think the tank was clean. All right, go ahead and get this thing raised up here. We'll get the blades sharpened. One thing you want to make sure you do when you're working on these blades is always pull the spark plug wire off. That way there's no chance as you spin this blade of this thing firing when you got your fingers underneath it. I think this one's got a good old gator blade on. All right, what I like to do is just clamp these things in the vise with the uh, sharp edge facing you. But when you do this, just keep your grinder moving. Try not to sit in one spot for very long. Main thing on these blades, this one is starting to get to the point where it's look, you know, it probably should be replaced at least the next time it's sharpened. Um, but keep that angle exactly the same as the factory. You don't want to make it too shallow and you don't want to make it too steep. That makes sure it cuts the grass at a very good angle. But these corners are key. And you can see there on that corner there, it's got a little chip on it. I sharpened it back though. That should be fine. But definitely the next time I would replace this blade. Also, if you look at these blades, I don't know if that'll show up on camera, but it shows grass side. When you put them back on, the cutting edge should be hitting the blade like this, and then it deflects the grass up underneath the mower deck. It's like a little star pattern. Make sure you get that lined up underneath here. All right, once you get that on there, get that all good and tight. Put your spark plug wire on it so you're not wondering why the heck it won't start later. All right, let's just get some fuel in it here. 
we'll put it down on the ground here and see what we got. Guys, one thing I do on fuel too for this small engine type stuff is always use ethanol free gas. You can get it from most tool rental places. If you're lucky enough to live near an airport, sometimes they'll sell it to you. Try not to spill it. All right, we'll just put a few ounces in there. Won't see any gas pouring out anywhere, so that's a good sign. I'd love to be surprised here and find out this carburetor doesn't need to be cleaned. I usually will take this outside, but like I said earlier, it's snowy out. I'm just gonna open this back door here and hopefully she don't smoke too bad. If she does, we'll take a break and let it clear out. All right, no starting fluid. Let's just see what this thing does here. All right, I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of starting fluid here just to see if we can get it to initially fire. See if it'll suck some of that fuel in there and run. Should have left that off there, huh? She's smoking a little bit, but I don't know if that's just where it's been tipped over on its side or not. Yeah, I can hear oil or something bubbling in the exhaust pipe. I love it when they just run like that. Can't beat that. We'll get her back up here and get her cleaned up and another one ready to go. All right, this next step's obviously not something that's you know has to be done on this thing. I just like to clean them up. I like to polish them. You know, I'll take them apart, take the wheels off, and clean it all up. It makes it sell much much better. You know, it doesn't give anybody something to come and say, "Oh, it looks like an old mower." When you clean these things up and polish them, I mean, people show up to buy them and they're they're pulling their money out of their pocket before they even get in the driveway because they look good. And that's what I'm gonna do now, and then I'm gonna wrap this video up. The other thing I do is make sure I check the uh, gears and stuff on these wheels when I got them off. But it just makes them easier to clean them up when you take them off to work on them. When I put these back together too, I'll put a little bit of grease on them. Gears all look good. Bearings look good. That just gets everything out of the way so we can clean it and polish it a little easier. What I use is just a really rough cut, Meguiar's um, extra heavy cut. It's all you need for a lawnmower. Works perfect. It's an old piece of broken pad or something like that. Works good down in here in these spots where you can't get to with the polisher. This literally takes an extra 10 minutes, but I think it's worth every minute you spend on it.
Like I said, that doesn't even take an extra 10 minutes and, you know, get all this thing shined up and looking brand new. It just makes a big difference when you're selling these. And I will also take a product called Coverall. It's kind of like Armor All and use it on all the plastic and the wheels. Just put it on with like a little chip brush, like a paintbrush. But guys, that's about it. That's literally five minutes. That's what I use on all the plastic stuff. It's called Coverall. I get it off of Amazon. It's very similar to uh, Armor All or something like that. But it just lasts longer and it's, it's easier to put on and buy it by the gallon. It's a little cheaper than Armor All. I just use a little chip brush, you know, and just put it on. Now, I usually leave this sit overnight and then wipe it off the following day. Now, I don't know how well that's showing up on camera, but it really makes a difference on how this plastic looks. It takes an old faded piece of plastic and really makes it look brand new. Guys, that's pretty much it. That don't leave anybody a whole lot of room to beat you down on price because it looks dirty or old or faded. Um, I'll wipe this down here in a little bit. Uh, and then I'll bring a video back around and I'll show you a finished result here on this thing and what it looks like. So that's one more ready to go for spring. Guys, I do want to say thanks for watching. You know, this channel has already grown exponentially in the last two to three weeks. I think I've picked up 50 subscribers in that period of time and I do appreciate it. Um, you know, like I said, I've got all kinds of projects I'm working on. Some of them are just simple little jobs like this. You know, I don't even know. You guys can leave some comments down below if this is something you even want to see going forward. Um, or if you just want to see the bigger projects because I could do this 20 times in a month uh, or more. So just leave me some comments down below. Let me know if these kind of videos are something that appeals to you or if you'd rather just see the bigger ones and I'll do a video, you know, a little less often. But anyway... Thanks, guys. Hit that subscriber button down below. You know, that really helps me out a lot. There's some affiliate links in the uh, description down below and in the comments. That helps out, too, and I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you watching. Till next time.